next week we'll be showing the rest of that interview along with uh, a look at his latest single which is called There Will Never Be Another Tonight. Now we're rejoined by uh, Kylie and Philip. Good morning again to you. Hi. Uh, Kylie, we were talking earlier on before the 8 o'clock news about mm -hmm. your new single mm -hmm. with um, Keith Washington and you actually recorded it separately there. Yeah, it was an ebony and ivory. I recorded my part of the song in London. That's the old Paul McCartney, Stevie yeah, Wonder song. Yeah, they, so. they recorded it separately as well. And Keith's vocals were recorded in New York. And so we only met at the video. So I mean, you, you didn't have, did you have any kind of track to sing along with uh, when you were recording it? No. I, I put my vocals down. We had a backing singer come in and put down a guide for Keith. And uh, so, no, I didn't have anyone to sing to. And I think if it was a song where you're singing lovingly to someone's eyes, you know, saying I love you, maybe that would be a little more difficult than if you were with me now. Right, great. Philip, um, the six weeks that you're going to do standing in for, for Jason, for mm. Jace, um, <laughs> could that... Stop your sniggering, right? <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of this, by the way? What do you think of him standing in for Jason? <laughs> Should have me sing? I have to go and... I, I did see Jason's performance, so I have to go and see if you... Yeah, OK. Well, don't tell me when you're there, though. That's OK, the I thing. won't. Do you think, I mean, if, I know you're saying your career is sort of meticulously planned. Did you ever plan to actually take up singing as a career? I no, mean, because, no, no. Because no, if, no. if the critics do like you and people <laughs> come in their, in their thousands to see you, then obviously the next logical step is that you, you put something down on, on record. No, it won't happen. I Definitely not. No, I promise you. I wouldn't do that. So if that I phone call comes and says, you'll never believe this, Philip. No, no. But Brian Adams has got a song for <laughs> Brian Adams, my goodness. No, no, certainly not. It's, um, it's one of those things that my, my philosophy, I've broken the rule to do, to do this six weeks, but I said that uh, there are a lot of presenters who've made singles. Um, and my, my, I've, always, I've always said that, uh, that you know, I'm, I'm a presenter and I should present. Uh, but I, I, mean, I broke the rule to do to do this six weeks. But that's you know that's a bit different. That's that this really is a, a like I said a, a big adventure. But I wouldn't make a record. I think that really is just pushing it too far. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're, you're presenting. You say you're presenting this week. Um, start of a new what, Schofield in Europe. Yeah, series. And where are you off to this time? First of all, um, the first program is uh, is Istanbul. Oh, I like Istanbul. Yeah, it's a, a wild city. program. It's a crazy place. That's where Europe and Asia. Yeah, well, it's, it's interesting because you, you cross the Bosphorus on the bridge and you've gone from Europe to Asia, although, of course, there aren't any, there aren't any sort of um, passports and things. It's all the same country. But I think it's only 3% of, uh, of Turkey is in Europe and the rest is in Asia. So there's a remarkable sort of cross-section of people and cultures. So it's that, I thought it was a really interesting one to start off with. What other places do you go to in the series? We've done uh, Reykjavik. Uh, so that's, that's Iceland. We've done Vienna in Austria. We've done Barcelona in Spain, Amsterdam, Holland and Prague in Czechoslovakia. Nice job if you can get it, isn't it, really? Not a bad summer. I had a good summer. Yeah, <laughs> Kylie, when, when you're on tour, do you get a chance to go out and see much of these places that no doubt Philip was filming? No, unfortunately. That's one of the, the, sort of the, the trials of success, I suppose, isn't it? You actually can't go out. Or, or do, you, do you dress up? Do you sort of put a uh, disguise on to go out? I guess in England, certainly, put a hat on, scarf on or glasses, which actually most of the time doesn't really make too much difference. I don't know how people do it. It's like, there she is. I, mean, I hardly recognise myself. Those new teeth of yours work really well, yeah. don't they? Those big, great big sort of teeth at the front, they work mm, really well. Really they good. Look I've tried the, the, the glasses with the nose and the moustache mm. all in one. Mm. I find that's a good one yeah. as well. Very subtle little sort of disguise. Yeah. Do they, I mean, do you, do you still get people camping out outside your house, like uh, freelance photographers um, or whatever? It's not, as, it's not as manic as it used to be. A few years ago, I think with the hype of Neighbours and it was just so full on and also I wasn't as good as, as coping with it as I am now. Not that I'm an expert by any means. So it's, I, it still baffles me sometimes all of this. Well not when you think about it that you've had what, is this the 13th hit single you've had? 14th, maybe it's oh, the 15th 14. now, oh, I think. 15th. Oh, sorry. I feel sorry. so old. <laughs> well that's why, you see, I mean, you've never had a flop yet, have you really? No. No. Well, that joy is still to come. <laughs> <laughs> stay with us. Stay with us for the time being. Thanks. Thanks, Helen. It's 12 minutes to nine. Now then, a rock musician who's been trying for more than 30 years to make a hit record will finally be rewarded today when he's presented with a national award, not for his music, but for trying so hard to become a star. 
Singer-songwriter Les Payne has had more than his fair share of bad luck over the years, but it never put him off trying to make the big time. In a moment, we'll be meeting Les, but first, Louise Bevan went to watch him rehearsing in his home county of Buckinghamshire. It's more than 30 years since Les Payne made his stage debut. He's been singing ever since and has written more than 500 songs. He's also released nine records and will tonight clock up his 5,100th performance. Yet at 48, he's still waiting to be discovered. Les Payne is an almost success story. He almost had a hit on several occasions, yet for years bad luck seemed to follow him around. In 1974, a promising first single sank without trace when the three-day week caused a shortage of vinyl. Then another disaster in 1982, Les released an anti-war song, but the Falklands War broke out and radio stations refused to play it. Les has a crowd of faithful fans. I think he's a very talented guy. I think some people get the breaks. Maybe Les's time has finally come. If not, Les won't worry. He'll just carry on his nightly performances at local pubs and clubs and says the day he fails is the day he's forced to find a day job. Ah, good stuff. And Les joins us now. Good morning good to morning. you. And we actually have this wonderful award here. Here we have. Oh, I haven't seen da, it. Da, 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 shining be. Could I ask Mr. Schofield to present this wonderful uh, well, award? This would be a great <laughs> honour and a privilege. This this is a fantastic story and this is obviously very well deserved. So Thank you for well Stop done. laughing. They, no, <laughs> not at all. Well, you asked earlier if people camp outside of Kylie's house. I actually camp outside of other people's houses. <laughs> <laughs> it's so rough it's been. <laughs> well, Les, it's really good to see you. Thank you. But you really have had such a lot of bad luck. I mean, it really has. When really was the first sort of major setback, do you think? Well, everyone's saying I have a lot of bad luck. I think I have a lot of good luck as well. But, I mean, the, I had a record of the week in 74 with Johnny Walker. Oh, who I've it. always admired. Yeah, still brilliant do. DJ. He's great. Um, and... Uh, it was record of the week, so I, suddenly everything happened. Mm. I had a lot of play. I sold about 3,000 in a week. And RCA actually brought out this um, uh, single and just did 3,000, which they tend to do with the mm. new artists. And it sold them all, and then the miners went on strike and brought the Ted Heath government down. Yeah. We went on a three-day week. Oh, no. There was an oil crisis which caused um, a vinyl shortage. <laughs> And you couldn't buy my records. Oh, you stop laughing. No, so I shouldn't rude. laugh. I know, I know. No, but it is funny. And I mean, I actually <laughs> that was... no, but I wanted the humour of this to come over because, see, I've done for many, many years. How many people out there can say they they love doing what they do for a living? That's very true. I love my job. That's very true. And although I gig in pubs, and that's why I've done so many gigs because the money's lousy. <laughs> um, I mean, I do three hundred gigs a year. Three hundred. Yeah, and when Great. when you hear sort of superstars on television <laughs> saying, "Hey." I've got 20 this year, I don't know if I'm going to manage it. <laughs> <laughs> it actually does make me laugh, because I do my own roadieing as well, you see. Good grief. That's what keeps me fit. <laughs> but does. the thing is, is that it's not to do with making it. I love music, I love writing, and I've learnt my craft. I know that I've got a good album out at the moment. <laughs> Yay! Oh, well done, good for you. <laughs> it's called 47 Summers, and the reason the title did you do that all yourself? Yeah, and, you brought and that's that me from a baby right to now. Right. I was never good looking. Oh, I don't know. And the thing is, is that um, I haven't got distribution on this, folks. <laughs> and that's the problem again, you see. Of if 100,000 people wanted this tomorrow, which you I'm sure they're starting to clamber now. I would, I would um, absolutely. They'd have to come to my house to get them, because I've right. just got them in the back of a trunk, you know. <laughs> So it's all these things, but see, right. if ever I feel down about the thing, like I brought a record out that was anti-war and the Falklands War started, Is that what all these kind of things that happen, if I feel down, I just look at the news and see people that can't eat and things. And well, I just absolutely. Think, you know, and as you say, that you, really lucky. you enjoy what you do, which is, That's right. which is so rare and so important. Didn't David Bowie write you a song? David Bowie wrote a song Now, there's not yeah. many people can say that. No, and he was fairly unknown, and I've still actually got the recording of him doing a demo with a handcuffs and piano and he actually changed the lyrics of the song when he did it it came out on Ziggy Stardust was that star the song it was star? star yeah but it used to start if someone had the sense to hear me if someone had the time to see oh Dave and I have friends you know but <laughs> oh, see I also <laughs> yeah we do <laughs> but I worked um, in uh, the British Legion in Prince's Risborough and a lot of people won't know where that is 
with um, an unknown singer called Peter Gabriel and the drummer oh, called Phil Collins, you see. Because I was around when they started. Uh -huh. And the thing everyone's saying about age, the reason this is called 47 Summers, and I've had to cross all these out because I'm 48 now, is um, everyone thinks if you're over 20 in this business, you're dead. And I still leap up in the air and I'm a, I'm a musician, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's that energy that's kept me going. But there are a lot of bands that still kept going that, that, that are over. I mean, look yeah, at I stones. think it's acceptable if you've made it and right. you're old. Right. But when you're starting, I mean starting, it's a joke. <laughs> but you know, the, the weird <laughs> phenomenon of, of rock music is is that they never told people like BB King to pack in. That's true. And that's what I grew up on all the old yeah. black blues and stuff. They don't tell Frank Sinatra to pack in. I don't um, think anybody would dare to sell some rags and rags But see, 40 it. years ago, there was no such thing as rock and roll, so an old rock and roller is a fairly sort mm. of unusual thing. So how long do you think, do you reckon you'll, you'll keep rocking? I'll do then? it till I die. I mean, you'll you know, if I don't get a break from all this publicity, and I mean, mm. it has gone really mad, yeah. then um, now I've met Philip as well. <laughs> and Kylie. Um, the thing, That's it, now you can pack in now. <laughs> I can pack in now. I can take over the show next time he goes off. <laughs> I can see you actually as See Joseph. the thing, well it's not really my, my sort of thing that I would sing because I'm sort of a rock singer but, um, and ballads and things but it's, it's nothing to do with that. I mean, if I have to busk, this is what yeah. I do. This is my job, you know. Right. So that's how, I mean, that's how you earn your money. You would never ever think of like, you, I, you said there would... I, I mean, I'll do it till I drop. Yeah, and I'm, 300 a year. Uh, around last from eight, from 1980 to 1990, right. I did between um, 250 and 300 a year, cool. and from 1970 to 1980, I did very similar, but for no money at all because I was doing things like Hammersmith Odeon and all the big gigs that are great to tell your folks, you know, and say, hey, guess where I'm playing? Mm. But for those gigs, when you support tours and all that, you have to pay to go on. You don't get paid for it, and so I actually never earned any money. So in 1980, I had to think, shall I give up? And I mean, that went in my head and out like yeah. that. Yeah. And I thought, no, I'm not going to. I've got to actually, um, you know, keep going. So I went back to square one and started doing duos and solos around the pubs. Kylie, Ky Ky how, many, how many gigs did you do this year? I'm ashamed to say. <laughs> Come um, on, how many? Well, I just did a two-week two tour of the UK, so that was... 12 shows. He does that in an afternoon. <laughs> exactly. I think it's wonderful. It's so admirable that, you Me know, too. to have so much drive and determination and to believe so much in what you do is mm. wonderful. I mean, you're inspiring me right I do now. enjoy it so much as well. I do enjoy, it. enjoy life. You know, it's everyone's brilliant. been saying, are you a failure? Are yeah. you a failure? What <laughs> sort of thing to ask But me? that's the thing, like, the people... It, they like to pick up on something that's negative and it's just... Yeah, it's that's so sad. wrong. But hang on, when there's so much right. positive that yeah, you've done and you're right. You did have it. success. You, you got a song quite close to being chosen for the Eurovision Song Contest, didn't you? Yeah, I was really glad that never got through. <laughs> 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 the thing is also, through, through the biog, I said, whatever you do, don't put out a hard luck story because I'm a really happy guy. And um, they, they put out this thing, um, like David Bowie wrote a song for him and next week he failed Opportunity Knocks, which is true. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got a deal with RCA and I failed new faces, so I was quite pleased as well about that. Well, uh, but what, what we plan to do is, um, we've got your CD, give me your yeah. CD over because I think this We're is the most the deserved show, plug we? that has ever been done really in the history of certainly plug, this, plug, this plug, program. Plug. It's uh, Les Payne's new CD, it's called 47 Summers, and everybody should go and we're going to pick a track from that. We'd like to film a pop video with you. We'll, we we'll make a pop video with you. If we can listen great. to it. I can't we'll cry for you, it might be a single. Right. I mean, well, we'll... Right. What are you saying? And if it, if it you goes, can all be, innit? If it goes for 16 weeks at number one, we've got part share in it as yes, well, all right? Definitely. You can come on with the bow and arrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we'll do that. That'll be good fun. We'll Great, make a video you. with you. Yeah, That'll be good. Thanks. Lovely. Yep. Okay. What are you doing, Kylie? What, what have you got planned coming up? Anything anymore? I'm doing some promotion around Europe and then I'm going home for Christmas, so I'm really excited to be getting home for the summer and Great. see my family. Have a good time. Philip's going to be busy over... Uh, well, when do you take mm -hmm. over? When's it start? January the 13th. Yeah, and I've got a singing lesson at 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> well, Les could probably give you one. <laughs> yeah. And I've got to go because I've got a gig. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Brilliant, brilliant. Thanks very much indeed. Good stuff, good yeah, to see you. you. Great. Now then, next tomorrow, guest. Tomorrow, Tomorrow, go on then. Well, your favourite, isn't it? It's uh, Clive James. It is, Mr Clive James. We're looking forward to that, are we not? And also Hollywood actor Tom Berenger, who's a new film out uh, with... Uh, Greta, is it Greta Sketchy or Satchy? I was going to mix up with Satchy and Satchy. Greta Sketchy, is it? Greta Sketchy. It's called Shattered. Yes.
Right now we'll have a look at the weather with Ulrika. Good morning to you. And you want to star in Les's video? Yes, we can only make we can only we'll only make the video if I can star in the video. Right. Even if I just have a camera roll walking on and off. <laughs> we, I think we can arrange this. I'm sure. A small arrangement. <laughs> picture of Suffolk sent in to us by John Pike. Thanks very much from that. Uh, Weather-wise, it's not very pleasant. Having just popped my head outside,